Good morning, and thanks for listening to Winds of Praise broadcasting. I always have to start out quiet because my friends are here, and it, 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 we talk. We talk while we should be not while we should be doing anything else. But uh, good. Good morning, everybody. Colleen, good morning. Well, good morning. Yeah. Rob, good morning. Good morning. And Ernie, good morning. Yeah, that's the order of how we get here. That's right. <laughs> no, I'm first. <laughs> Say about the last, right? Yeah, well. <laughs> what, what I was encouraged by was you guys just took the mics and straightened them out and put them into place. And, and Ernie and, did. And what were we talking about? We're here to open the mics and pray. And yes. I've been meditating all morning on fear not. Yes. Don't be mm-hmm. afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. And that's taken me to Psalm 23. It's taken me to Psalm 27. It's taken me to desiring just to be at the feet of Jesus. You know, that's what I want more than anything else, to be in his quiet and his solitude and at rest. And that's what this season is all about. So anyway, we've been talking and a-buzzing and... and, uh, Well, let me me share something while it's fresh on my mind. I just read a thing, a news report last night about China just launched a hypersonic missile that Mm -hmm. went around the world and was targeted perfectly. Mm -hmm. So talk Mm -hmm. about the enemy wanting to instill fear in us, right? Mm-hmm. And part of the siege mentality that the Satan has got our country gripped in, um, you know, you look at siege warfare in the Old Testament, and that's what's happening to our country. We're being locked down. We can't mm-hmm. do nothing. Well, it's not 100% here yet. It's happening everywhere else, and it's trying to get roots here. But I'm telling you, God is, God is force. But going back to the missile thing, it kind of freaked me out a little bit last <laughs> yes. night. It's like, okay, well, that's interesting. But so right now, technically, China is the leader in they're the top dog right now in in that kind of warfare because they got this missile that can go around the world in minutes and drop a nuke anywhere on the planet so that means they're bigger than god oh heck no that's what cracks See, me that's, up that's the deal and guess what right guess right what? i mean it's like the only thing that holds back the kingdom of darkness yes is us it's it's right. I mean, the, the children of god the church you know, and it's like when we actually take our place where we're supposed to be. Oh, my gosh. I mean, we actually put on the helmet of salvation, and we remember that we walk in the righteousness of Christ. We have divine favor. We've got the belt of truth, the sandals of peace, the shield of faith, the sword of the Spirit. We're filled fresh and anew right. with the Spirit. We walk in the Spirit oh my gosh, um, and in fire it. and in fire. <laughs> you know, so I go, hey, listen, no wonder he told us that he'd given us mighty powerful weapons for pushing back the kingdom of darkness. So there you go. And so it's like if we become afraid, right. then we will allow the enemy, you know, to lock us down. Yeah. That's just a big skyrocket. That's all that is. You know, like Fourth of July, poof. Right, and, and so, nothing to God. So nothing. Here, here's another distraction of the enemy saying, "No, wait, wait, look at this. Here, right, look at this. Right. Take a look at this." And no, don't take a look at that. I mean, sure, be aware of it, but put your eyes upon God. What does the Scripture say? Fear God. Right. He's the one who has the power of life and death. Right. You know. Well, and then I thought about um, Jehoshaphat. I mean, you know, the the Assyrians were coming to like wipe them out. I mean you know, purposely, like, wipe them out. And, I mean, they were so hideous and horrible. I mean, they would skewer people on these Asher poles and, and kind of line the, the roadway, you know, with these people that had been skewered on Asher poles to convince you that you needed to be really, really afraid because that's what's going to happen to you. And so they're coming, you know, to take them out. And, and so Jehoshaphat goes before the Lord and goes, whoa, you know, what should we do? And what did he do? He called all the people together. He read the word of God to them. And then he sent the choir out. <laughs> the choir. That's you, and, Scott. And, That's right. And That's as you he, too, Ernie. You know, and as he sends that, Let's go. he sends the choir out, the enemy became so confused, they killed each other. Yeah. <laughs> Which, you know, by the way, it's like the evil one cannot stand praise and worship. That's right. And so I thought about the winds of praise and I thought, oh, isn't that incredible? Right here in Lincoln County, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, praise and worship music out across the airways. 
and it's kind of like I've listened to, I'm aware of several different, um, you know, just like a physical church building, you know, where all of the believers come to worship, but they will actually play praise and worship music all day long. Yeah, it's good. Well, you know, that's a principle I've applied for the last 30 years. Um, it, like we leave our boat every morning, we, 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 Christians say we well, the lead winds of praise or K-Love, you know, so we got that going all the time. Customer's boats, my truck. A lot of times when I'm working on a boat, I'll find a radio and I'll turn on the Christian radios and I'll just leave it on. And out of all the years I've been doing that, I only had this one grumpy old guy get on my case. I don't want to listen to that radio station on my boat. You have no right leaving it on. I said, oh, no, Jesus loves you, man. Get over we, it. We just want to share the love of God. That's and, it. And again, That's the, it. the Psalms say, better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. elsewhere. You yeah. know, One day in the presence of the Lord. And we get to spend every day in the presence of the Lord when we choose to, to keep our eyes upon Him and fear not. Fear not the things that are going on around us. Right. Even to the point of death. Now, it's easy for me to say that, but if someone was, you know, pointing a gun in my face or torture, whatever, God, I mean, just that, talked about that would you, be hard. He's already said three things I preached on yesterday. <laughs> Wonder so, why. Three points. <laughs> well, well, the main thing, too, is like, just like we're saying, in a defensive encounter, just like you're talking about, if somebody comes up and points a gun in your face, already the first weapon that the Lord said is our mouth. Rebuke them in the name of the Lord. Okay. Start Even if you got a gun in your hand, right? But, but what you do in a defensive situation is you focus on the problem, not the distraction. So technically, the gun in the guy's hand or the knife or whatever is the distraction, but you want to you want to focus on the problem, which is the person. So you're making eye contact and you're watching, and by watching his eyes, you can kind of tell what's going to happen next. You know, so that's how you prepare yourself. But we always have the most powerful weapon on the planet already is our mouth speaking God's word. Yeah. And life and death are in the power of our tongue. Exactly. Right. So we want to pray. Uh, we want to pray to the Lord. And Rob, you came in this morning and you said you were having some inside troubles with your intestines and mm -hmm. things. And I thought of the word the other day that uh, was impressed upon me. And, and you talked, Colleen, this morning about um, splitting up some animals and doing a covenant. And I thought of, it wasn't the same story, but I thought of the covenant that God made with Abram. Mm -hmm. And Abram made sacrifice and he split up these animals and then uh, apparently that was a time that they did that during the day that was a common practice it was kind of like divining spirits and asking for wisdom from you know other gods and so he he said he did this thing where he split up these animals and the fire of God fell and God said to him I'm going to uh, put my word on in your insides your inward parts I'm going to place my Torah is what they said on your inside parts your inner parts and I'm going to write my word on your heart and that's Amen. what we that's what we count on today is the presence of the Lord who is writing his word on our hearts but the inward parts that's what I think about Rob is I'm going to put my spirit on your inward parts which means your guts <laughs> right yeah I agree yeah, it does and sometimes it's it's interpreted as to mean his mind on your mind mm -hmm. but it really means your your inward parts your and so parts. and if you mm -hmm. are having trouble with your inner parts rob mm -hmm. we can speak the word of god right. in you and through you and That's to right. you for mm -hmm. your complete healing and That's to right. not be afraid of whatever's going on uh we just speak healing in That's the right. name of jesus, jesus we name. speak healing to the inward parts the inner parts mm -hmm. as your word declares lord you're going to yes. be on our yes. inside Thank you're going to be on our outside you're going to yes. be protecting lord. us lord. you're going to be with Amazing. us and we will be with you forever and forever mm -hmm. but for now yeah. lord we have this this body on earth yeah. and we pray peace yes. and healing yes. to rob's inward parts yes. in jesus name. jesus name and Jesus, we just want to <clears throat> thank you and praise you uh, the way that you told the disciples that they needed to hang out in that upper room until you uh, were in heaven. And then you would send the Holy Spirit who came and filled them inside, you know, totally their insides. And, you know, that they would be able to walk and talk and pray in the Spirit. And then the holy boldness that, that you uh, gave them because... To be really honest, pr prior to you sending the Holy Spirit, they were huddled in the upper room, all scared and frightened of the world around them. And so, Father, we thank you that it is through the power of your Holy Spirit that gives us the, the holy boldness.
to proclaim really who you are or to step out and pray for someone who is needing to be set free or healed or whatever. So we thank you for that incredible boldness that you give mm -hmm. to each one of us. Amen. Yes. Amen, Lord. And uh, Amen. I thank you for people who are making a difference in our world, who are going forth boldly. Mm -hmm. Um, thank you for Clyde Smith. He came in on Friday and yeah. was here. Mm -hmm. he's, he's one that prays on Saturday with the tent and with the truck. And, and he then sent me a picture afterwards of uh, a truth that was going on of missionaries in Haiti being absconded with, being mm -hmm. abducted, being kidnapped and held for ransom. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how that's turned out, but we need to pray for people like that who are actually in danger mm -hmm. and so right now we lift up uh, people like this father yes, who are yes, in Lord. dangerous parts of the world and and mm -hmm. be that the united states be it haiti be it yeah. uh, south america yeah, be it uh, africa be it asia mm -hmm. russia australia wherever people are being oppressed yep, absolutely right. afghanistan for sure Canada. lord people who are, are crying out for rescue we know that you rescue them internally but we also pray for uh safety and well-being for their bodies lord we know that if it if it comes to the worst then you are with them you've got them and you cover them but lord we pray for those people who are making a difference in our world and lord we don't pray again against the people we pray against evil you say sure. we're our wrestle our fight is not against the physical right. people but it's against the principalities That's it's right. the unseen spirits the rulers of evil lord and may they get their due May the evil ones, and, and they will, as your word proclaims, may they get their due. And in the meantime, rescue the righteous, Lord. Yes, Lord. Reach yes. out and touch them yes. and hold them and comfort them and provide the peace yes. that they need in Jesus' name. Mm. And we just want to thank you yeah. and praise yeah. you for your mighty warring Stand angels that are kind of like as we pray, oftentimes then that mighty warring angel or a whole set of, of angels are sent in behalf of the prayers. And that I I love some of the stories on the Six Day War, like when there'd be like, you know, two or three guys, you know, ran out of their ammunition. You know, the enemy is coming up the hill. They think that they are going to be annihilated, and yet the people have this absolutely freaked out look on their face as they turn and run. And then years later, that those men discovered that they that the enemy saw the warring angels and so father we don't understand all of those things i mm. remember i don't know if it was elisha anyway he allowed his servant to see the chariots mm -hmm. of fire and the mm -hmm. warring angels and so there are more with us than um who are against us That's so right. help us keep our eyes focused on you Jesus. yes lord in your name we pray mm. amen 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 don't get distracted right <clears throat> One of the things that I was <laughs> thinking of, about before I came into the station, uh, we were talking about, um, you know, like, as the, uh, the Lord was talking to me that morning, like when I got the phone call that Dan had uh, died and, and gone to heaven, and it was like several people have said, but Colleen, when, when Jesus told you to get up in the morning and to take the shower and to you know, redo your hair and makeup and put on the white pants and the blue shirt, uh, they pointed out to me that I had been obedient. You know, I, I didn't really think of it quite like that, you know, but they pointed that out to me, and I thought, yeah, that that's really a key point throughout Scripture, you know, where it's like, you know, God can tell us something, but if we don't actually do it, then what actually happens. And so, you know, um, I had actually then written a little story uh, that came up as a memory um, because when our son Jeff left and went to heaven and I had to empty out, you know, his entire house and pack all of his things, in the process I came across um, a pair of brand new leather deck shoes. I mean, they were I mean, still in the box. I mean, they were beautiful, but they were size 12 and a half or 13, so that's not just your ordinary size. And I remember looking at those and thinking, wow, you know, I, I don't really know what to do with these shoes. 
and I kept going to church and sitting kind of across the aisle from me was a man I didn't even know his name anyway and the Lord kept saying the shoes belong to him and I went pardon me I mean I don't even know that guy's name and then I was picturing myself with a shoe box you know trying to tell this man that I was pretty sure these shoes belonged to him because God said so <coughs> so anyway I went back home and I decided well I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and just put the shoes in like a gift bag you know that, that way it won't look quite so you know obvious and so when the church service is over um, you know I walk up to the guy who you know I still don't know what his <laughs> name was and so I tapped him on the shoulder and I said I know this sounds kind of funny but I feel like the Lord keeps telling me that these shoes belong to you. Man, I mean, he just like whipped his shoe off and put his foot in there, and they fit just perfect. And the next, you know, the next Sunday, he comes to church and he said, hey, Colleen, he said, I've had a lot of foot problems. I mean, a lot of pain in my feet. And he said, somehow, he said, these shoes, when I wear these shoes, I have no pain in my feet wow. whatsoever. Wow. <clears throat> and so anyway, I just got such a chuckle out of it. I know his name is Mike, you know, and I thought, God, I mean, if I would just pay attention, you know, to what you tell me, you know, and not argue with you like, ooh, I don't know his name, and no, oh, I'm scared to go over there and do that, and right. whatever. So anyway, <clears throat> it came up as a, a, a memory on my Facebook. And so I get a message from one of the fellows um, up in uh, the Dalles, Oregon. He had been a state trooper, you know, here in Newport, but he and his family, you know, moved to, um, to the Dalles, you know, where he's, you know, like fish and wildlife state trooper. Anyway, um, he, he loves to go hunting. And so the other day he was, he was hunting and he had on this shirt and he realized, oh, this dear friend whose, you know, whose um, husband, you know, went hunting with them, but he, the man had died of a heart attack. And so anyway, the wife had given him um, one of the guy's uh, hunting shirts. And so Sweet had the hunting shirt mm -hmm. on. And he said, I just felt that prompting that I needed to take a photo of myself in the hunting shirt and send it to the guy's wife. Oh. And so he sent it and she was so pleased. Yeah. And then the other thing was that she was so pleased but she had not hunted at all since her husband had died like a couple of years before whatever. And somehow that photo being sent, she then texted back later to say, you know what, I got my bow out and I'm going to be going hunting. Wow. And, and so I thought, now, isn't that, isn't that interesting, you know, that those little nudges, mm. you know, that we not be afraid mm -hmm. to, like, follow up on what that is. I yeah. mean, whether it's, you know, giving somebody a pair of brand new shoes that, you know, it just doesn't make sense, or like my friend Swede, you know, who takes a photo of this hunting shirt and sends it to her, and it it helps her to take the next step she needs to take. Yeah, isn't that wild? Mm -hmm. You're listening to Winds of Praise. Let me just interject. That's Colleen McNeil uh, speaking, and I'm Scott Albright. Ernie Moquin is here, and Rob Dupra. And Colleen uh, just lost your husband, so you've got what I want to say is real skin in this game. You just lost your husband, and it hasn't been two weeks yet. Our beloved Dan McNeil uh, passed away and is in heaven, so he's alive. It's like Billy Graham says, you know, don't, when someone says that Billy Graham is dead, don't believe him. I'm more alive than I've ever been. <laughs> yeah. and, and that's what we, that's the good news, folks, is there's eternal life. That's a great And hope. you choose which way you're going to go. Do you want to be with God forever in his arms, or do you want to be separated from God? Do you want to persist on saying evil should reign? I want to do whatever I want. You know, thumbs to you, thumb, you know, my thumb on my nose to you, God. You will get what you want. You get what you choose. God is very patient. You know, we aren't. If if He says, "Okay, you judge the world," we'd probably say, "Get them." You know. Yeah. And yet, right. God wants mercy upon everybody. He wants salvation. He wants the wicked to become right. righteous. Right. And every 
Everybody has that choice right now. Right. And so I'm just saying it's amazing, Colleen, that uh, you've lost Dan after 59 years of marriage, still within that two-week period, and you have such a joy on your heart, and you've been such a testimony. Yeah, it's to been people. awesome. Yeah. It's the well, tangible, it, this is the real mm -hmm. deal. Like Scott just said, this is where the rubber hits the road in our Christian walk. Are what we believing in real, or is it just a fairy tale? And, you know, you know, and why, it's why, why? Total evidence, yeah. yeah. And it's like, why, why is it that way? It's because in the middle of the night when I get that phone call, I mean, I just said, Jesus, I think I need you to talk to me. And boy, I'm telling you, he, he, talked, did. So he, he personally does. talked to me. So. And so then I'm just like, kind of like blown away going, I mean, I actually said to him, I went, whoa. You really are so, talking to so me this any of, moment. So any of you listening right now, you could say the same thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've, I've never believed, but if you are real, show yourself. Right. Yes. You know, prove it to me. You, you have that argument. Oh, right? All the time. Yeah. Well, and then the fact is, is that, I mean, the, what he talked to me about, I mean, he used the illustration of Bathsheba and Davi, David's baby dying. Right. You know, which then, I mean, and God specifically says to David, David, the baby's right here with me in heaven. You're going to come and see him, but he is not going to come and see you. And I'm sitting there and I'm going, oh, wow, that's exactly what you're saying to me. My Dan, my Dan is right there with you. Right. I'm going to go see him, but he's not going to come <laughs> here to see me. And then it's like, you know, when morning rolls around and Jesus goes, you know, Colleen, I need you to get up. I need you to go take a shower, re redo your hair and your makeup. I want you to put on white pants and an electric blue shirt. And it's like, all of a sudden, I mean, I'm so overwhelmed because I'm thinking, oh, wow, Jesus. I mean, just like you actually counseled David. I mean, you told him to get up to freshen up, to worship, and to get something to eat. And it's like, you're actually counseling me just like you did, just mm -hmm. like you did Isn't David. That amazing? And, it is. and it's like, and as I, as I did that, it's like as the water, you know, of the shower washed over me, it was just like grief and the uh. sting of death, any of that kind of stuff just seemed to just kind of wash Amen. away. Amen. And I had such incredible peace and it was like, and then the Lord just kept reassuring me, Dan's right here. Then, like three days later, I come into the station, and, and Rob says, well, hey, the Lord doesn't always give me, you know, words, but he told me to tell you, Colleen, the package is delivered, <laughs> and Dan used to be at work at the post office, yeah. you know, and I'm going, God, you have such a sense of humor, mm -hmm. but it's like, what I feel like he's trying to tell me, like he told David, was like, David, I don't want you mourning and mourning and, and sorrowing and all this stuff, right. I, I've got stuff for you to do, and so it's like, where does all this come from? It's simply because Jesus is Real. real, I'm mm -hmm. telling you, he's real. Yes, he is. Rob, how did you, how did you get that word when when uh, well you say you were praying? But, mm -hmm. uh, how do you hear from God? Um, in different <laughs> ways. Yeah, that's a open question. It is a question. Yeah, um, in different ways. At that point, um, I was on the way driving in that morning, and um, I was just praying for my friend. I was just praying for your heart and for all the things that were going on, and just. All of those things and, and i wanted to see you because i need to see for myself if you were okay and uh and that's when god said to me rob just tell her the package is delivered yeah. and i'm like that's what you want to say yep i'm like okay and and that was the end of my prayer we were done <laughs> and so i drove in knowing i had a word for you yeah uh, not that i get you're right i don't get those things necessarily all the time but i absolutely knew who was speaking and what he was saying and and then watching you receive it i knew absolutely it was all confirmed oh my gosh. so well isn't it neat even though Technically, you don't need us, but isn't it neat to know you got some big brothers <laughs> oh, out there watching, praying for you, us, <laughs> praying for you, and watching over you? And well, it, as a matter of fact, um, the you know Scott had taken that program and then he downloaded it into like YouTube, and so I've had you know several friends who you know live like in Georgia or West Virginia or Florida or you know wherever Texas, 
And, and so anyway, they listened to that program. And what came across <coughs> so strongly to them was the incredible love and support of Scott and Ernie and Rob. And it just, it just permeated that, um, you know, that video. And so I just think, see, look, I mean, yeah. Jesus, you provide everything we mm. need. E even, even the photo on that particular YouTube uh, was a picture of the sunset the night before. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was actually going uh, to bowling. I'm on a bowling <laughs> thing on Thursday <laughs> nights, and I was on my way to Toledo. You and radical you. I, I know. know. And the sun was just beautiful, and so I pulled over in Salettes, and I mm -hmm. snapped that photo. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was thinking the next day, boy, what am I going to put on this? Because that's when you were talking yeah. and giving this, the testimony. And I thought, oh, there's that photo. And it was like the sunset the night before. Yeah. 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 And, the, and the thing is, <coughs> is that my Dan, my Dan is not lost. Mm -mm. No. Nope. You know, and he's not even really lost to me, you know, because... There you go. Let's, right. let's face it. I mean... Dan did spoil this girl <laughs> a lot. I mean, and so even like when I walked through the house, and yeah, I'd love him to be sitting in his little round chair having his cup of coffee and, and whatever, but it's like, you know, just, you know, it's like when you marry, two become one. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's like that incredible love relationship that Dan and I had it's like it permeates that <coughs> entire house, you know, along with the presence of Christ. So it's like, you know, it's like, yeah, Dan, I mean, I'd like you to be <laughs> here and spoil me some more. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I have the assurance, we have the assurance. That, you're, yeah. that you're there in heaven. And, and it's like, that. and God's Absolutely. giving me the right. grace, you know, to... Um, you know, to love, love, love. And it's not just for you only. Right. It's for everybody. Mm -hmm. That's what we're trying to say. It's for everybody. Right. Mm -hmm. well, I've got two things to say that are in correlation with that. Um, <clears throat> I was in John chapter 17 yesterday. I was teaching through Isaiah 46 and correlating it between, uh, one of the words was righteousness, but uh, we are in Christ. And so what did, you know, throughout all of, of course, the Gospel of John, but in 17, Jesus is praying. He said, because the disciples were asking him, well, you know, we'd sure like to see the Father. And he's like, have you not been with me all this time and have not seen him? I said, the Father and I are one. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And then, of course, he brings in the Holy Spirit. I am in the Father. The Father is in me, right? And then, as you believe in me, now we are in you. You. So it's all this covenant relationship, because we're in the New Testament, the New Covenant, right? Mm -hmm. And so... <clears throat> going um and so in a marriage relationship like Colleen just shared right um the, it, there's three of you in that relationship mm -hmm. you look at a triangle and and Cindy and I are on the bottom of that each corner of that triangle yeah. Jesus is at the top and the whole purpose of a Christian marriage that covenant relationship is that you're in Christ and that that triangle becomes a circle you know and and you're so even though Dan is physically departed that covenant relationship you know Colleen is in Dan Dan is in Colleen Christ is in both of them and the Father and the Holy Spirit it is amazing folks it is so amazing so there's a scripture that says that uh, when we're when when you go into Ephesians and it says we wrestle not against flesh and blood and all these things and then you, you follow that through with a few other scriptures Jesus said Satan is not in me you know no more because he has separated himself so the flip side of the coin is today what I'm teaching at noon on the invisible war, the angelic conflict, <laughs> Satan in history is what we're, the topic we're going through. Um, <clears throat> it, it talks about the deliverance of the children of, e e e of Israel from Egypt. So he's breaking down all of the false gods, right? And he's also, and all the plagues represented those gods, and, the, and um, those gods were supposed to protect the people, right? So God took all of their silliness and he threw it right in their face their gods were completely impotent worthless they're not real and so today as you're listening to this either live today wherever you're at or if you listen to this later whatever your false god is because there is only one god in the universe and he is the lord jesus christ and he is supreme and all the benefits of serving him you're listening to this is real stuff 
Everything you're putting your hope and trust in someday is going to perish. Everything in this earth is going to be gone someday. And whatever you're putting your hope and trust in, it's false. You may, Satan can't give you true peace that only comes from God. All you can get in this life is temporary satisfaction. Ooh, I got the new car, or I got this job, or you know, I've achieved this goal, or I've cleaned up, I've done my part of my bucket list. So you're satisfied and you're happy, but what happens? It doesn't last. You always want more. You're always looking for the next thing. The coolest part about what we get to experience, it doesn't matter, as the Apostle Paul said, whether we have a little or we have a lot. We're content because we have, we, we've put our priorities in the right place. So like you've heard us talk earlier about the distractions, lots of distractions going on, but you got to look at the, you got to look at the, our enemy. You got to look at the end game. And that's especially if you're a believer and you're, you're maybe a little fearful or going into those things. Um, you have to keep your eyes on the end game. And the end game is exactly what we're talking about. The end game for us is to be with Christ in eternity, right? And we're no longer, right? We're no longer citizens of this earth, right? This earth belongs to Satan. He's already wanted it. It's already his. So our battle is against flesh and blood. It's against the spiritual forces, not the people. We have to pray for our enemies. We, and we get to be the church now, right? We really have to love our... And I'm dealing with the brother in Washington... And he's just struggling because he, he doesn't he won't wear a mask and he's just getting for the first day like six people surround him in a gas station yesterday you got to put the mask on and and you know just start preaching jesus man and he almost did that but he didn't but but it's really here on our shores for real we get to be the church we have to love our enemies we have to ask god for discernment and like we've been talking about those little things that god puts on your heart just do them you know and don't live in fear all right, Ernie Moquin, Sorry. and uh, yeah, you know, we, we could be here forever. I, oh, my we, gosh. We, that's what we love being here with our brothers and sisters, and we love being in the presence of God. And it, it, Amen. You can find that peace by yourself uh, at, at your home. Read Psalm 27. It says, you know, nothing better than being at the feet of Jesus, oh away gosh, from yeah. the quiet. I mean, away from the noise and into the quiet, into the rest. And you can have that rest, so that's what we want to proclaim. In fact, you. Jesus, right now, we just mm -hmm. want to thank you. We yes, thank Lord. you and praise that's you right. that you're real. Yes, thank you Lord. that you love us. Mm. Thank you that you live in our heart. Mm -hmm. Thank you that you abide in us and we abide in you. That's right. We thank yes, you Lord. for just your very presence with us. Thank you that you yes, are real. Lord. And thank you that you'll help us to be able to share who you are with others. And Father, I was reminded as um, Pastor Luke was preaching yesterday and he was talking about Jesus like when you were on the cross and you suffered. I mean, I can't even believe. I mean, we couldn't even tell who you were. I mean, the suffering, you know, the way that you've been beaten and, and all of those things. But then as you, as you, your spirit left to go to heaven, it's like, the centurion that was at the bottom of that cross. It's like as he thought about all the times that he'd seen you throughout, you know, throughout the area, talking and praying and doing all these things, but as he saw you, Jesus, suffering there on the cross, I mean, he, he stepped back and said, he is the Christ. Mm -hmm. And so, Jesus, we thank you and praise you that you really are real. And That's that you right. love mm -hmm. each one of us so much. And we want to be able to share with others around us that you really honestly came to set the captives free, to mm -hmm. heal the sick, to raise the dead, and to give us life more abundantly. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, amen. Colleen, and thank you, Rob, for coming in. It is KWPBLP Newport. If you'd like to reach out to any of us, use my phone. My cell phone is 541 270 This is Monday, the 18th of October. God willing, we'll be back here Friday morning. Uh, and uh, just put your trust in the Lord. That's what, that's what we have to say. And speaking of Christ on the cross, Colleen, let's play a song next. Uh, this is called Wood and Nails. Whoa. Amen. <laughs> Thanks for listening. <laughs>